In Creo Parametric, when you create a hole, you automatically get an axis going through the hole. But when you create a slot, you don't automatically get axes. In this video, we'll take a look at ways in which you can get axes in the half cylinders, in the center, and on the face of the slot. So here I am in a part model. I'm going to create a slot on this surface in a couple of different ways. Let me go to the sketch tab. And I'll pick the face that I want to sketch on. And let me turn on my datum plane display. I want to change what I'm using as my orientation reference. I want to use this plane in the middle instead. And I will use the middle mouse button to get into sketch mode. Let me turn off my datum plane display for a moment. And the first way that I will create the slot is by using the offset command. So I'll click on offset. And here we have the new dialog box for using the offset command. I will select an edge. And then if I use the shift key, I can grab the entire loop. Let's change the offset dimension to a value of five. This is good, so I will hit the little check mark out of that toolbar. So here I have my sketch. To get out of sketch mode, I can hold down the right mouse button and hit the check mark. With the sketch still selected, I can hold down the right mouse button in order to extrude it. Let me flip the direction, and it automatically switches to a cut. And I can right click over the depth drag handle, and I'll use a depth option of to next and then hit the middle mouse button. So there I have my slots created, but I do not get axes through the half cylinders. But again, my axis display is turned on. You don't see any axes down here. Let me show you one way in which you can get the axes in the half cylinders. If I go to my options, file, options, and then options, and then configuration editor, there's an option that you can have turned on. Let me scroll down and the option is called show axes for extruded arcs. The default value of that is no. I'm going to change that to a value of yes and then click the OK button. And I'm not going to save it in my config.profile for the moment. Now I will take that extrude and I will right click and delete it. Yes, I want to delete it. I'm going to take the original sketch and now I am going to extrude it and I can choose that from the mini toolbar. And once again, let me rotate so I can flip the direction of the feature, right click over the, oops, clicked on the wrong thing. I don't know what I clicked on, but let me click on the depth drag handle and then to next. And then I will hit the middle mouse button. And now you can see that I do have axes going through the arcs. And so that option will automatically generate axes in your extruded arcs. Also, if you are revolving a feature through less than 360 degrees, you will now automatically get an axis as well. But let me turn that option off so I can show you another way of generating your axes. File, Options, Options, Configuration Editor, and I'll scroll down. And then here we have Show Axes for Extruded Arcs. Let me set that back to the default value of No, and I'm not going to save it for the moment. I'm going to delete that sketch and the extrude feature. I'll right mouse click and use the Delete command. I'm going to show another way of creating the slot. So let's go to the sketch tool and I'll grab this surface over here. And again, I'm going to use as my orientation reference, a datum plane that's going through the middle. It'll just help me locate my sketch later on. Let's hit the sketch button. Let's turn off our datum plane display. And now I will go to the palette command because in the palette command, you have a shapes tab. And here we have a racetrack shape. I'll double click on it and then drop it in the middle of the screen. So there you can see it looks like a slot. I'm going to change the size of this to a value of 10. I happen to know that that works for the dimensions in this part. So that's good. Let me close out of my sketch palette. 
Let me hit the check mark on import section and let me repaint the screen. And I need to change some dimensions in here. Let's change this for this particular part. I think do I want a value of 90. Yeah, 90 works for this particular part. I am happy with it. And I could use a symmetric constraint to get rid of this dimension, but I will just make that dimension strong uh, in order to not have a weak dimension. But anyhow, here I have my sketch. And if I just hit the check mark, I'll be in the same situation as before. If I go to extrude this and then flip the direction and then right mouse click to next. Well, I don't automatically get my axes in this situation. So let's edit definition of the sketch. And I will uh, then drop in some points from the datum group. Be aware that there are some points from the sketching group. But if you use these points, you will not get axes created in your feature. So let's go to the point command over here. And I'll drop one here, and I'll drop one here, and I'll drop one right here in the middle. And then let me hit the check mark. And so now you can see that I do indeed have axes created through the two cylinders and through the middle of the part. And if you're wondering, hey Dave, but you created that sketch right in the middle using a datum plane, you had a place to drop it. Well, anytime that you use the sketch from the palette, you will be able to drop the datum point in the middle in order to create the axis. Let me go to a, another part and I'm going to create a sketch on this surface over here. Let me hit the sketch button. This time I will deliberately put my slot so that is not located in the center of the part. Let's go to the palette command and once again I'll go to shapes and let's use racetrack and I'll just drop it. I like to drop it off the screen somewhere just so I can see it and then eyeball it in here a little bit. Let me close that. Let me repaint. Uh, and let's see, let's use a scale for this one. I don't know, 80 looks good. And hit the check mark in order to drop it in there. And let me hit re repaint again. There we go. Just didn't want everything highlighted. And maybe I want to dimension this to some different references. I can hit the dimension and then from here to here and then middle mouse button. And let's locate this, I don't know, 250. And then let's also dimension this point to this surface and then middle mouse button. And let's use a value of 150. And eh, let's use something smaller, 100. So that is good. That's where I want this particular slot to be. And let me change to a non-shaded mode just so it's a little easier for you to see where I'm going to drop these. If I go to the datum group and here's the point, well, I can drop my point right there where I want an axis and right there when I where I want an axis. And when I go to drop it in the middle, it's automatically going to snap into that center line that comes in the sketch from your palette and the other different points in there. So that's good. Let me hit the middle mouse button to get out of point creation mode. Let me hit the check mark in order to complete that. And with the sketch still selected, I will hold down the right mouse button in order to get to the extrude tool. And let's flip its direction, right mouse click, and I'll use two next, and then middle mouse button. And there you can see that I am getting my axes going through the half cylinders and the middle. All right, very last thing to show you. Let's say that I go back to my other part. Let me go back to shading with edges. Let's say I want a datum axis on the face of the sketch. Well, let me go back to the sketch and I will edit definition. And this time, instead of dropping in points, I can drop in a center line from the datum group. Be aware this is not the center line from the sketching group. If you create a center line from the sketching group, it will only exist in the sketch. But if I drop in a center line and then put it in here and I'll make it horizontal and then hit the check mark, I will end up having an axis that goes on the face of the slot. But your sketch has to be visible. 
Let me go to my sketch and then show it. And now I have an axis right on the center of that face there. Let me go to a no hidden line mode so that you can see it right there on the face of the slot in case you wanted to use that for some kind of slider connection for a, another component later on. But there you have it. That's how you can end up generating your axes for a slot feature through the half cylinders, through the center, and on the face of the slot.